So are you curious about what goes on behind the scenes of The Mandalorian? Well, not only is there a major lack of green screen, everything you see on screen is exactly what the actors were looking at on set. With the help of some incredibly innovative technology, they can create beautiful sets and landscapes with the click of a button. Obviously, actors need to be as convincing as possible when recording ADR. That's automated dialogue replacement after the scene has already been filmed. We all know Pedro Pascal is a very serious actor, so he needed his Grogu prop in hand to recreate the scene. Let's head into town. See if we can pick up a lead. The prop in question was actually a pillow. And can you imagine walking in on Pedro Pascal reciting lines and clutching a pillow in the sound booth without context? So deciding on who would train Grogu, like the real Grogu, not the pillow, was actually a difficult decision. They threw around the idea of bringing Ahsoka into the show, but ultimately decided she wouldn't be a great fit for the role. After deciding on Luke, the real challenge began. CGI. They brought in Mark Hamill as well as a 30-year-old looking body double and eventually blended the two together in a visual effects program called Lola until they actually achieved the Luke Skywalker we saw on screen. So what did you think about them bringing in a CGI Skywalker? Or rather the lack of green screens. They were really trying to avoid using green screens in the show. So they did some creative workarounds in the end. Instead of having a green screen that you had to move around in light, which took forever. Those frustrations led to some brilliant innovations. That led to, do you have a green, a green stage? Do you have pre-lit green areas that you could expose? That led to green video walls, which is basically just putting green behind the actor and using interactive light to expose it. The physical set design in the middle of all of that also had to match what was being displayed, which of course was built by the art department. Then there were the 3D models plopped onto the LED environment that surrounded the set, which can respond to camera movement and emulate the real world. Like how absolutely insane is that? But let's get deeper into that whole video wall concept. It's majorly innovative and one of the groundbreaking technical aspects that The Mandalorian set the stage with. We can have game engine, real-time render, and video wall technology coming together to create a backdrop. There are literally seven machines pumping out visuals, and this is just for the pre-production. Imagine the entire set surrounded with the simplest way to put it, huge LED TV screens. And you really quickly forget that you're indoors and you're not out on some planet's surface. It actually feels like a real three-dimensional environment surrounding you. I mean, technically, that's exactly what it is. So, like, does anyone know where I can get one of these to transform my apartment? Let me know in the comments. So not only is the set completely real in a visual aspect, they're able to capture every single shot on camera without having to take it into post. You end up with real-time final pixels in camera. They can even do stuff like change the positions of mountains from one end of the stage to the other. And considering I can barely manage to turn my phone camera off in night mode, consider me impressed. You could switch between the Iceland location to the desert location, all within the same day of shooting. They can do pretty much anything thing in real time. Change the time of day, the location on the sun, you name it. So typically, shots of a character in a vehicle traveling at high speeds through a complex environment were one of the most difficult things to achieve. They figured a way around this was LED screens. Taking this technique of uh, image-based lighting that we've been using in computer graphics. They're taking a common form technique and like switching it up. They're using it to light a subject instead of a still image. Still with me? Then they jump in with texture mapping. So the camera could move anywhere. We would do interiors like Werner Herzog's office. And this technique actually allowed them to capture whatever they want in any environment, from any angle, at any speed. And another way this works out better than using green screens was because of the reflection on Mando's costume. And no matter what, there was always going to be reflection of the environment from his helmet. Think about if they used green screens. The only thing that would be reflected is the color green. So not the vibe. We were getting exactly what we wanted to out of his helmet. So everything that they do on this set is to save time and, most importantly, money. And one of the secret tricks involved is called a French reverse. Where you hit a button 
and the world rotates 180 degrees, it just speeds up the whole shooting process. This whole thing takes just seconds. Not only that, but everything they do is saved. So if they decide they don't really like the way that it looks, they can easily just hit a button and go back to the way it was a few seconds ago, or even the day before. Everything they do is completely backed up, so they have free reign to experiment with anything they want. It really is inspiring because there it is. What you see is what you're getting. The only thing they really had to mess with was the color correction, particularly when it came to the practical set. Whether it be a rock or a barrel or something, I would try to color correct it to match what was on the set. So if they switched up the scene, there could be a blue sky that reflects a ton of blue onto the rock, essentially changing its entire look. So they had to be very detail-oriented when it came to nailing down those colors. All right, but we must protect Pedro Pascal at all costs, which is why he had not one, but two stunt doubles. Latif Crowder stepped up for all the hand-to-hand -hand combat and Brendan Wayne packed the big guns. This was mostly due to the fact that Brandon's a professional shooter, so they wanted to utilize his skills on screen. Though, of course, Pedro Pascal was the one behind Mando's mask most of the time, but when it came to those intense combat and shooting scenes, his stunt doubles were happy to take the reins. It actually brings up my skill set as well. You know, if he's coming with a lot of energy and heart, I have to really be on point. And like, speaking of doubles, did you know that there were quite a few alternate designs for our favorite baby Yoda? A lot of them were actually rejected for being too cute. And like, who knew that could even be a possibility? Others were rejected for being too ugly. Ouch. Or because they had the wrong proportions. Like, Look at this guy. All of those Yoda variations led to the Yoda we know and love today. I want fans to feel like they're having that experience right there in front of them. So what do you think? Did they ultimately pick the best design? You thought I was done talking about Yoda? Well, I'm not. Did you know that he had to be operated by not one, not two, not even three, but four puppeteers? Here he comes forward, tilt the head up a little bit. Yeah, now reach. It seriously takes a village. One controlled the eyes, one controlled the head and body, while a third controlled the face and a fourth controlled the body and arms movement. Werner even demanded that they used the puppet in all the scenes instead of rendering in digital versions of it. They filmed it one on one. It was heartbreakingly beautiful. I mean, it makes sense. Like if you spent all those resources creating the puppet and dedicating an entire team to operating its movements, why wouldn't you want to just use it as much as you could? So what do you think? Are you even more impressed with The Mandalorian after finding out that the sets were created in real time? Often in seconds. Baby Yoda is like so well loved that he has four handlers giving him screen time. Pedro Pascal takes his acting to a whole nother level with his security blanket pillow prop. What's your favorite behind the scenes fact? 